Welcome to part two of the switching videos. In this video we'll be discussing the concept of switching loops and we'll also introduce the spanning tree protocol. So to start we'll draw up a simple network here composed of three switches and what we're going to want to do is um, you know most of the time you want to add as much redundancy as possible uh, to a network so that if any component fails uh, you have as much of the network still available as possible. So in this case, we'd want to connect each switch to the other two. And one thing we're hoping to get out of that is if, let's say, you know, this cable were to fail, um, you know, this switch could still talk to this switch through this alternate path. However, there's one default switching behavior that we have to watch out for, um, which we can mitigate, but let's take a look at what it is first. Um, let's say we have two computers here, uh, user A and user B, and in this case let's just assume that this is a, a fresh topology so none of the switches know where any of the computers are, um, and so when A goes to send a packet to B, this switch, not knowing where B lives, is going to broadcast the packet, which in this case means that it's going to send the packet out both of its links. So it's going to go this way, and it's going to go this way. Of course, in this case, this switch also doesn't know where B is, so he's going to broadcast it as well. So while B will receive the packet, because the switch doesn't know that B's there, he'll also broadcast the packet uh, to the other switch. One thing it will not do, however, is broadcast it back out on the link it received. So that's just a default behavior. It knows if I received it on this port, I shouldn't send it back. But when we get to this switch, it's going to process both of these packets, meaning it's going to send the packet here, and it's going to send this packet back this way. And as you can see now, if we continue to draw this out, what we have is a loop. And we would call this, uh, in fact, a switching loop. And this packet then will cycle uh, infinitely throughout these devices until something is done to break the connection. Either one of the switches gets unplugged or a cable gets disconnected. Um, somehow this loop has to be broken in order to stop these packets from going. And what will eventually end up happening is when you get enough of these packets on the network, uh, it'll be too much for the switch to handle. So maybe the, the CPU will get high or you'll start to see uh, drop packets. Um, which is usually when you start noticing that you have uh, a switching loop in the first place is that normal traffic is no longer able to flow on the network because there's so many of these junk packets. Um, and this scenario is usually referred to as a, a broadcast storm. In order to mitigate this, the network engineers who invented all this came up with what's called the spanning tree protocol. And what it does is it enables switches to have multiple links and potentially create a switching loop, but the protocol actually will detect any possible switching loops and shut them down. And so, for example, uh, if we have our three switches here again, what's going to happen is uh, as soon as these switches start talking to each other, um, they're all going to run uh, spanning tree on each of the links and they're going to talk to each other and realize that they're all switches and they're going to detect all the different links that exist here and so um, let's say this is the master or root um, he's going to talk to these two and realize that uh, relative to him there's a redundant path here and so these guys will be told that um, they need to shut this link down and only go through him. So if this switch, switch A, needs to talk to switch B, he's going to send his traffic through the route rather than directly across. And while this may seem like a longer path, the advantage is, is that, um, again, we don't have loops. And in the event that, say, this link were to fail, um, these guys would recognize the failure and go ahead and open these links so that then you would have another viable path uh, to send traffic across. So to review, uh, when switches are configured in such a way 
that uh, broadcast traffic is able to circulate without stopping. We call that a switching loop. And when enough traffic gets stuck, broadcast traffic gets stuck in a switching loop, that it starts to cause normal network traffic to be disrupted. We call that a broadcast storm. And in order to prevent switching loops and broadcast storms, uh, we run spanning tree protocol, or STP, on switches that will prevent loops while allowing for uh, redundancy. Uh, so that in case of something like a cable failure, uh, we can still have backup links. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.